Halo 3 is my favorite first-person shooter of all time. Today we will look at each playable mission from Halo 3 and see where they stack up against each other, just like we did for the first two games in the franchise. So, in Halo 3 fashion, let's finish the fight. Alright, I'm gonna prove to you I'm telepathic. First, think of your least favorite mission from Halo 3. Okay, you got it? You ready? It's Cortana, isn't it? I bet for at least 90% of you I was correct. This is because Cortana is the worst mission in Halo 3, and most people will agree with that. It's really easy to understand why this is people's least favorite. It's long and boring, like the library and other flood-based missions that have come before it. But this one is also frustrating as well, as it just seems unfairly difficult in areas. Cortana forgoes the dark Forerunner structures that have become a staple of flood-based missions in exchange for high charity covered in disgusting brown-greenish flood gunk. It's honestly not enjoyable to look at, but that's kind of the point, and it is one of the best flood areas from an aesthetic standpoint due to the sheer disgustingness of it. It's also cool to think about how it used to look versus how it looks now. As it stands, Cortana is one of Bungie's worst missions, a shame, as it actually does have some of my favorite story moments from the entire saga. The only other mission I dislike from Halo 3 is Floodgate. However, in terms of flood missions, it does fare a little better than one might expect. There are two main reasons for this. A, it's really short. Unlike Cortana, the library, and a lot of other flood missions, it's over pretty fast, meaning you won't find yourself looking back, remembering all those painful memories of just begging the mission to end. And B, like Cortana, it avoids using gray forerunner structures. We see flood spores in the air and a night setting, and we actually feel like the flood is invading Earth. However, one thing I really dislike about Floodgate is the fact that the whole mission takes place backtracking through an area you just played through in the storm. I know backtracking and reusing mission areas has always been a part of Halo, but even in CE you had two missions between a sold on control room and two betrayals, and that was the shortest amount of time between reused mission areas. Or at least it was until Floodgate came along. I think it's pretty inexcusable that Bungie decided to have you just go right back through the mission you just played instead of building a different area or at least putting some time in between those missions. In the end, Floodgate is a decent flood-oriented mission, but I am definitely not a fan. Sierra 117 is the seventh best mission in Halo 3. It's okay. It is probably the most forgettable mission in the game. I wish Halo 3 started with an interior close quarters mission like Halo's 1 or 2. This helped players get more acclimated to the controls and feel of the game. Sierra 117 just feels a little too open and maybe just a little too difficult for an opening section. However, it is able to incorporate some elements that we would normally not get to see until later missions, such as and including a sniping section. The jungle area shows off Halo 3's, at the time, new HD graphics, and to this day, it is still an impressive and breathtaking area. That's really all I have to say. It's a solid infantry-on-infantry infantry mission that I like, but don't love. Crow's Nest is going to come in at number 6, and it is a mission I really do like. And this is where we really start to pick up in terms of the quality of the missions. It may be the best defense mission in all of Halo. Two things I'll rate Crow's Nest over your average defense-based mission in sections. Number one, you only defend one area for a wave or two. Some defense sections in Halo, Halo 2 particularly, you hold out for an ungodly number of waves in one area, and it just gets boring and drags on, as not changing the environment often leads to players not having to change up their strategy. Crow's Nest keeps the player moving from area to area, ensuring that the mission never drags. Also, too, Crow's Nest actually gives you context as to why you are defending unlike some other Halo missions. Again, I'm looking at you, Halo 2, where most of the time you would just stop in a room or area or elevator and fight off waves of enemies for no particular reason. In Halo 3 and Crow's Nest, the defending part actually plays into Halo 3's narrative, making the player more invested. Crow's Nest also has some really fun encounters against large amounts of brutes, which helps its cause as well. Into the top 5 now with Halo, which is the hardest mission to judge in my opinion. On one hand, Halo is the perfect mission to cap off the Halo trilogy, with a lot of callbacks to previous games, including the aesthetics of the Halo control room, and using a Warthog run to cap it all off. However, the actual gameplay is just a bunch of lackluster flood encounters, and that doesn't even count the boss battle with 343 Guilty Spark. And yes, that was in quotes. It kind of reminds me of the mission 343 Guilty Spark from Combat Evolved, where on one hand, it had a lot of value in terms of in-game storytelling, but on the other, it wasn't necessarily the strongest from a pure game gameplay standpoint. I guess that's why it lands here at 5. It's memorable, emotional, and beautiful in a lot of ways, but it isn't the strongest in terms of pure gameplay quality. Next up is going to be the storm. The climax to the earth defense section did not disappoint. Most people think of the scare fight when they think of this mission, and to be fair, it is a highlight, seeing as it's your first proper fight with the scarab. 
And yeah, I'm looking at you, Halo 2. The arguably better part of this mission is pushing back through enemy lines with squads of marines in order to push the Covenant's foothold on Earth. Halo has always had a military roots mixed in with its sci-fi, and that aspect of the franchise is definitely on display here. The art design of the mission is pretty boring though, mostly grays and browns and tans, which I guess fits the more of military vibe, but it is still a shame as it's not the most interesting mission to look at, and it doesn't help that you have to play right back through this area in the next mission, Floodgate, which we talked about earlier. Savo Highway is going to finish bronze here. Wide open warthogs and wraiths on the African plain is a dream come true. This mission has so much room for player expression, and it's really where Halo 3 begins to hit its stride and really starts to build momentum, as the player has really gotten used to the mechanics of the game at this point. There's not much to dislike here, and not necessarily much to say. It just incorporates a tried and true formula into Halo 3 and works very well. And Savo Highway will always continue to be one of my favorite Halo missions of all time. Some people might like to see the arc at number one, and I can totally understand. However, for me, it's going to be the second best mission in the game. There isn't much to dislike about the arc at all. It starts with a sniping section and hunter fight. It has not so arguably the best tank section in any game. It has your second fight ever with the Scarab, where now you're more comfortable with how to fight it and you can use new strategies against it. It has some solid close quarter sections towards the end of the mission. Basically everything you want. You really are splitting hairs between this and number one. I just think the mission in the top spot is able to do even better. The best mission Halo 3 goes to, The Covenant. What a way to cap off the war with some of the funnest enemies in FPS history. This mission definitely fears inspired by the original game's two best missions. The Silent Cartographer, with the opening beach landing, and Halo, with the Pine Forest and the Halo Ring aesthetic. Which is, if you remember, where you have your first big fight with The Covenant. The Covenant does a great job at taking all the best elements from the Halo franchise and using them in the final mission. Warthog tank, Hornet, infantry, some flood, it's all here and firing on all cylinders. The dual scare fight also deserves a special shout out, as it is arguably the gameplay high point of the entire franchise. Pitting you against two behemoths was a ton of ways to go about winning the fight. I really like the way this mission utilizes the flood too. They are used a bit at the end of the mission, but are not the focus and don't drag the mission down. The only flaw I can really find here is that it does use some copy-pasted rooms and a little bit of padding at places, but ultimately I'm having so much fun that doesn't really bother me here. The Covenant is easily one of the best missions in Halo, and is an excellent way of capping off the war with the Covenant, and stands as Halo 3's highlight mission. Thank you guys for watching, make sure to leave your list in the comments, and give me an explanation as to why you put the missions where you do, I'd really love to read it, and hopefully I will see you back for Halo 3 ODST, and if you have not seen my Halo 1 and 2 mission rankings, definitely go check those out. See you guys next time.